Hello everyone and thank you for tuning in to another episode. I'm your host, Adrian. I want to thank you guys for tuning in. This is a very unique episode as I filmed and recorded a sales meeting that we were having here at our office, although I did it from my computer. So the quality is not the best, but the information is gold. So grab a piece of paper, grab a pen. You guys are going to enjoy this one. All right. How are we doing today, guys? We good? We're live, excited, full of energy. You guys have a good uh, good production day there at your office. I hope we all did. You guys, I'm really excited today. It's my first time up here this year, and I've been waiting because I have some really good stuff to give you guys. And I want you to grab a pen. I want you to grab a paper. Today, we are going to be talking about the seven ways to increase your results. The seven ways to increase your results. And I'm going, I take, I'm taking this straight from something that I went through in 2015. I explained this with the office, uh, I believe it was last week or the following week. I don't know how many of you know, but in 2015, I, in essence, did not produce a deal until April. I didn't do a single thing until April in 2015. I still closed that year with 36 clothes netting over $320,000 as a 24 year old. I did that by understanding these seven principles. And, I, and the reason why I share that with you is because a lot of us, we're out there, we're, we're grinding, we're getting it, and we haven't seen the results. And we're looking at our goal and we're looking at it and we think that the goal may not end up panning out. How many of us may be feeling that right now? Where you're, you're, you're getting after it, nothing's occurring, and you're wondering to yourself, what the heck's going on? Why hasn't this occurred? <laughs> Sorry, guys, I was spilling that on myself. Sorry. So why hasn't this occurred, right? And I was telling, I was asking myself that the same, I was asking myself the same question in 2015 in April. Because you see, January came around, and I striked out, I didn't get any deals. February came around, I striked out, I didn't get any deals. March came around, I think I got one escrow and it ended up falling, falling out of escrow in April. So I had not one signed contract. I had not nothing until April of 2015 and I could have given up on my goal. I could have given up on my goal, but I implemented these seven things that really increased it and made me hit the goal. And at the same time, I, was, I, I believe I was the top listing, the top sales and the top closing agent of 2015 that year. And I didn't do a deal until April. So for those of you that have not done a transaction yet, for those of you that have not gotten a contract signed, we have so much time. You can still do it. And we're going to start to go through these seven things. I want you to think about this quote. Tony Robbins said this quote. He said, when it seems impossible, when it seems like nothing is going to work, you're usually just a few millimeters away from making it happen. Think about that. We're a few millimeters away from making it happen. He talks about the two millimeter rule in golf. I'm a horrible golfer, so that's what it is. But in essence, if your hands are tilted two millimeters this way, the ball goes in the different direction. If your hands point two millimeters this way, the ball goes in the perfect direction. Well, it's the same thing with what we're doing and it's tiny little things that we need to adjust, tiny things we're gonna go through this after, this, this early after, or I'm sorry, later afternoon and really understand these are the little tiny things that can bring us those results, okay? Number one, I want you to write down being certain. Being certain. I had to become more certain on the phones. I had to become more certain in who I was as a professional. The person who is most certain, write this down. The person who is most certain will always influence the other person. The person who is most certain will always influence the other person. So I got to ask you, how certain are you? 
How certain are you at doing your job? How certain are you on getting the contract signed? How certain are you when you pick up the phone to make that expired call? Something you gotta ask yourself. And how certain do you sound over the phone? Because if certainty, if, 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 if we're saying here, okay, Adrian, I need to be more certain and being more certain is how I then influence others. And if our job is to go out there and help and influence those that may be having a hard time making the decision to actually act, well then how can we increase ways that we're getting certain in our business? How can we come from more of a certain standpoint to get the other person to feel that we can actually get the job done? This makes sense? So how certain are you at your job? And then I want you to write down what, what level of certainty can you take it to? What's the level of certainty that you can take it to? Right now, if you're playing scale of one to 10, if you're playing a two or three, what can you take it to? You take it to a 10. Susan says, take it to a 10. You get on the phone with every person fully certain at a 10, Susan, there's no way that people aren't gonna hire you. There's no way. You, you see, the, the, the problem with certainty, guys, and I'm going to touch on those, those, those agents that are starting to do a lot of deals. The problem with certainty as you get better is, and this is what I came across, I had everybody around me telling me how good I was. I got so good at my scripts. I got so good at objection handling. I got so good at picking up the phone and getting an expired contract signed that everybody around me was telling me how good I was, and I stopped growing. I stopped growing because everybody said, so for you top producers that want to take it to the next level, you need to intensify your role play. We need to get more certain. If you're certain here, we need to go here. Frank, if you're here and I know you're good, great. How can we create more accountability, more role plays to get you here, right? Increase the intensity. And then number two, number two. I worked on the little things every single day. I worked on the little things every single day. What do I mean by the little things? I mean waking up and going to the gym. I mean role playing. I mean showing up and speaking with 30 people every single day. Following up. Talking to myself in a positive manner. These are all little things that we forget to do. Who can agree? Yeah. Not watching the news, not listening to negative, right? Yeah. You see, there's no secret in becoming great, but you have to understand this. You can only become great by doing the little things in a great way every single day day. I'm going to repeat that. There is no secret in becoming great. There's not one. You become great by doing the little things in a great way every single day. So I got to ask you, are you doing the little things? Write it down. Are you doing the little things? Question mark. Yes or no? And if you're not, then do you think you're ever going to really be great? If you're not, do you think we'll ever really hit our goal? And then the key word, circle it, underline it, stamp it on your forehead every day every day manny not tuesday and then kiro wednesday and then i tuesday and then maybe monday and then okay monday tuesday i'm gonna take off thursday friday no every day consistency every single day they will add up 
And before you know it, boom, I hit my deal. I hit my goal. Yes, following me here? It's the little things that separate the amateurs from the professionals. It's the little things that separate you from getting what you want from you not getting what you want. But we look past them. Our ego gets in the way. We say we don't need it. That's, I don't need to do that. I'm different. You are. <laughs> All right, number three. Impatiently patient. Number three, I had to work on being impatiently patient. In, in February of 2015, February 22nd came around and I realized I had no deals. I had no leads. I had nothing, but I wanted to do 30 deals that year. I wanted to beat everybody. I could have been very impatient in, in, in February and said, this isn't working, I'm done because of the impatience. But we have to learn to be impatiently patient and get over the instant gratification. You millennials, get over the instant gratification. Right now, you put something in the microwave and it's done in 10 seconds. Pick up my phone, I want something, I want to figure out something on Google, it's there. It's not the same with your production. It takes time. You need to have patience by doing the little things every single day. And I wrote down, having the urgency to get things done, meaning impatient, but yet the patience to allow things to compound over time. The patience to compound things over time. Robert got into this business. Robert Mooneyton, you came from selling cars, right? Yep. Robert Mooneyton, bless you. Robert Mooneyton came from selling cars. How, how long did it take you to do your first transaction? Uh, about eight, nine months. Robert said eight to nine months to do his first transaction. You and I had this talk about it being impatiently patient, right? Oh, yes, I felt it. Do you think if you were maybe too impatient the first two months, you may have given up? I felt that throughout the whole process. He said he felt that through the whole process. But I knew one thing about Robert. He was so impatient that he was willing to do what needed to get done that day. But he was patient enough to understand that time just has to catch up to itself. And the more you do, the more time will catch up to himself. If you're doing 20, you haven't gotten it yet, go to 40. You're doing 50, you haven't gotten it yet, go to 100. That was the number one thing that I, I, instead of doing 30 contacts every day, I said, okay, I'm gonna do 30 contacts or set an appointment, or I'm just gonna sit on the phones all day long if I have nothing to do. Impatiently patient, guys. And stop thinking that it's going to happen tomorrow, the next day, and just be okay with whatever happens. And just go do your job. Right? And so when we think about this, when we think about being impatiently patient, I want you to ask yourself, which side are you on? Are you being impatient? Are you being patient? Or are you utilizing both? I want you to ask yourself that, write that down. And then ask yourself in your own way, how can you be more impatiently patient? How can you be more impatiently patient? Good. All right, moving on to number four. Now, you guys, these were all things that this is what I utilized. If I look back at 2015, if I look back on how I went from zero all the way up to April to closing out at 36, if I look at that, these were the things that I implemented. The impatiently patient part, if I was, again, if I was highly impatient, I wouldn't have been able to hang in there. 
and and I'm really I'm really talking to you millennials. You guys you guys get into this business and think it's going to happen tomorrow. I wish it happens tomorrow. But every great person knows, every great successful real estate agent knows it takes time. So millennials, just bear with the process, please. All right, number four, you are the only one who will get in your own way. Write that down. You are the only one who will get in your own way. You are the only one who's going to get in your own way. Danny can come up here and talk to, he's blue in the face with the most valuable content in the world. Anthony can come up here and talk to, he's blue in the face with the most valuable contact in the world. I'm sorry, content in the world. But if we do not do it, if we do not go out there and face ourselves in the mirror and take action on us, then none, nothing is going to occur. Everything Danny is talking about, everything that the lead coaches are talking about, none of that will ever, ever, ever become into fruition if we, if we can just stop and understand that it's us that get in the way. It's not the accountability that stops you. It's not the overwhelm of texts that stop you. It's not the overwhelm of accountability. It's you not being able to deal with yourself because you're the only one who gets in your own way. And when I look in the mirror, when you look in the mirror, that is your only competition. I said this at the role play, I'm gonna say it again, I don't care. You are your only competition. I'm looking at myself. Adrian, it's just you and I, buddy. There's no one else. You're your only competition. You're the only one that's gonna keep you in the bed. You're the only one that's gonna keep you from not making the contacts. And you need to speak to yourself in that same way. And then you need to say, F that. I am more powerful. I will not allow my ego to control me because I am in control of me. And when we realize that it's you versus you and not you versus the competition, things will start to flow to you in abundance. Things will just start to, to, to come to you because you're focused on you and you're not giving energy to anything else around you. You are the most powerful force in the world. I don't, there is not another thing on this planet that is more powerful than a human being, than your mind. And it's either you allow your mind to soak in this content, soak in what we're saying and take action on that, or you're gonna find a way to look yourself in the mirror and say no. You're gonna find a way to stop yourself. You're gonna find a way to care about what everybody else is doing. We all know that doesn't do any good. So I want you to ask yourself, have you been playing you versus you? Or are you focused on everyone around you? Write it down. Are you focused on you or are you focused on everyone around you? And then based off that answer, write down how you can become more of you. How Kim, Kim can take more of herself to herself. Because I understand this. I understand that if Let's look at the greats in the industry, and I'll just name Ty Leon Guerrero, Alex Lair, Jody Raphael. If all three of those, if all three of those decided to pay attention to what everybody else was doing when they were coming up in their career, would they be known as Jody, Alex Lair, and Ty Leon Guerrero? Would they be known as that? No, we wouldn't even, we, we wouldn't even know who they are. So I have to ask you a question. 10 to 15 years from now, do you want people to know who you are? Or do you want your name to come up and it not matter? Because if you want it to matter, then start understanding that you are the only one that gets in your way. And all you need to do is create some adjustments that number seven is going to come. It's going to give you guys the adjustments, but to give yourself the adjustments to get out of that and put yourself into that full being that you need to be. You guys all heard this. It's be, do, have. 
not do have be, not have be do, it's be do have. And how do you be? You get more in touch with you and stop worrying about him, her, them, it. All right. Number five, count your nose. Count your nose. I don't mean this nose, I mean N-O apostrophe S. Count your nose equals know your numbers. Know your numbers. Know how many times you need to get a no to get a yes. I remember June came around. June 2015, I forget how many I had pending or, or active, I, I forget. But I remember I was able to take my number. Danny helped me look at my number and we, we realized that I, it was like 72 contacts to an appointment at that time because I knew my numbers. I tracked my numbers. I knew how many no's I needed to get to a yes. I understood that every no brought me closer to a yes. I understood that I just needed to stack up a bunch of little no's and eventually I'll get this big yes. So I figured out what my average, my ratio was. What's my ratio? How many contacts do I need to make to set an appointment? And when I realized it was 76, I started going for 76 contacts every single day. Why? Because I was setting an appointment every 76 contacts. So I got to ask you, Anna, if you knew that it only took you 50 contacts to set one appointment, would you make 50 contacts every single day? But if you don't know that 50 contacts set you to an appointment, then do you think you may fall short and only do 10 without knowing? How many of us may be doing that now? because we don't know our numbers. We're not tracking them. We're not tracking all of our contacts to figure out what that yes is. And when I understood that, that's really when I went to June and then June came around, I realized it was just 76 contacts to an appointment. So I just played a game. Okay, great, I'll make 76 contacts every single day. Boom, 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 boom. Drive the needle all the way over, RPM, redline it. What do I gotta lose? Go home and watch The Bachelor, Shark Tank? The good wife, Roya said. I don't even know what the hell that is. <laughs> right? What, what better else do we have to do? So know that every no brings about a yes. Know how many no's you need to get. Know how many no's you need to get to hit your goal. And I want you to remember this. The only no. RPM, redline. Yes, absolutely. Redline it all the way. All right, sorry. The only, the only thing we need to understand is this. One thing, get ready to write it down. The only no that counts, write this down. The only no that counts in selling is the last one before you give up. The last one before you give up. The only no that counts, think about this. The only no that counts in selling is the last no before you give up. Because I can get a thousand no's and continue. I can get 2,000 no's and continue. But if I get 2,001 no's and I give up, well, that's the only no that dropped my production. That's the only no that didn't get me to where I needed to go. That no to go home or continue to get a bunch of no's is the one that separated me from a $20,000 paycheck. You guys get what I'm saying here? The only no that counts is the no that you allow before you give up. You. It all goes back down to you. Not the no that we give you. The no that you give yourself. All right, number six. Number six. Focus. Focus. Robert has it written down on the side of his page already. Focus. Said this quote at the role play. I'll say it again. Bill Gates' dad walked up to Bill Gates and Warren Buffett. Asked them both, what was the secret in becoming so successful? They both responded with the same answer. Focus. 
I didn't even know that quote back then. But what I did know is that when I focused and I shut my phones off, when I eliminated, shut my phone off, perfect timing. <laughs> when I shut my phone off, when I eliminated the distractions, when I told my mom, you can't call me until 1130, mom. I don't care who's dying. Don't call me till 1130. I know that's rough. Some of you are like, Adrian, that's sad. I, I had to stay focused. Focused. It's the focus that's going to separate you from getting a result or not. It's the focus that racehorse have in order to win the race. And when they get unfocused, they fall. And that's just like our mindset. We get focused. I get a text message about a transaction or an appraisal that came in sideways. And I fall. My mindset falls. I'm dialing, but I'm not dialing. I'm there, but I'm not there. You guys, you guys following me here? Yeah. Right? Because it's that, it's, it's that focus. And I want you to think about this. This is why the morning routine is so important. I want you to really think about this. The morning routine. I wrote down here, give the rubber band example. This is the morning routine and this is how it relates to being focused, okay? For those of you that think a morning routine is just, a, just something that Anthony just kind of says, okay? Morning routine, let's get a rubber band. You wake up early, stretch the rubber band. You listen, you, you, uh, in, you, you go through some incantations and affirmations, we stretch the rubber band. You listen to a good podcast, we stretch the rubber band. You get a good workout in, we stretch the rubber band. It's not even seven o'clock yet. You get a good breakfast in, we stretch the rubber band. You guys following me? We get into the office at a predetermined time, we stretch the rubber band, right? We have a good role play, we stretch the rubber band. And right when we go to get on the phones, the rubber band lets go and boom, all that energy, all that momentum, all that focus from the morning routine is now there and you're there and you're live, you're on the call. It's the rubber band example. That's why the morning routine is so important and it gets you focused. It gets you in tuned. No phones, no distractions. And then another thing that I did, because I know, look at, I know myself. I, when I was at the Rancho office, I liked going into Eddie's office and just playing around. What we do, just mess around. What's the distractions, right? Used to always do that. But I had a predetermined time in when, that, when I did that in my schedule. I had a one to two mark labeled distractions. So I can focus. Do you see that? Because I played a trick with my subconscious mind. My subconscious mind knows that I like to play around. It knows, it knows. Adrian, you've been playing around since you were a little kid, man. This is what you do. So knowing that, I had to create a little section in my calendar that said distractions. And for two hours, I'll go in there and blah, 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 and then I'll get out, focus. I'm alive, I'm a professional, I'm, I'm here to do this shit. Right? Right? We play a role with the, we play a role, a little trick with our subconscious. We have to, Cher says. Or we get in trouble all day. Reward yourself, absolutely. But it comes back down to that focus, guys. And, and that's why I recommend you create a pre-prospecting routine. I, I get in, get, have some sort of two to three things that you do before you get on your phones to get yourself highly focused. This all comes together, guys. This all comes together from the being certain to the little things, to the knowing your numbers, to the being impatiently patient, to, to, to getting out of your own way, to focus. It's all full circle. It all comes together. And then we go on to number seven. And that's, because I get this question all the time. Adrian, great. All that sounds great. How the heck do I work on it? How do I get better at it? How do I mute out the ego? How do I not let the ego take control when I'm trying to be certain, when I'm trying to work on the little things, when I'm trying to get a morning routine, Adrian, how, how, how do I do that when my ego is telling me that I don't need to? Well, you guys are going to love this one, and it's number seven, and it's incantations versus affirmations. Write that down. 
incantations versus affirmations. How do I get more certain? How do I get more impatiently patient? How do I get more focused? Well, it comes down to you declaring that. And it comes down to you using an incantation within your body to, to affirm it in you. Who knows the difference between an affirmation and an incantation? So an affirmation, for those that don't know, an affirmation, you're just using words. I'm smart. I'm powerful. I'm a top listing agent. I'm unique. Those are affirmations. And then there's what we call incantations. And incantations, you not only use your voice, but you use your body and you use your length. You, you bring all your energy to it. So it's not just, I'm a top listing agent. It's, I'm a top listing agent. And you feel it because it's the incantation. It's that that's going to get you more focused. It's that that's going to help you do the little things. It's that that when embedded into your brain, you will naturally go out there and do what you need to do without you having to think about it. The incantations. So let's do this. Get, everybody get up off your seats. Let's try this. Up off your seats. All right. Shake it all off. Shake it off. Shake it off. You're have, come on. Shake it off. Shake it off. Okay. So say to yourself, just real, real basic, I'm a top listing agent. I'm a top listing agent. All right. Now it's so much enthusiasm and excitement. Okay, guys. Just, I'm, I'm a top listing agent. I'm a top listing agent. How'd that feel? <laughs> kind of good. Right, we do this. Just so you know, we do this. We walk into the office. I'm going to set a listing up on today. Are you? We do this, we wake up, I'm gonna get after it today. Are you? So now let's try it using our body. Now let's try it, if you need to yell it, yell it. And when I want you to say, I'm a top listing agent, I want you to literally pump your chest. Ladies, pump it, what, just <laughs> let it out, okay? <laughs> okay, all right. We're gonna do this incantation way, I'm a top listing agent, ready? One. Two, three, I'm a top listing agent. Let's do it again. I'm a top listing agent. Let's do it again. I'm a top listing agent. How did that feel? Give yourself a round of applause. Now I gotta ask you, keep standing. I gotta ask you, if you do this every single day with being more certain, I am more certain. I am focused. I am alive. I do set appointments every single day. Do you think eventually something will happen? Yes. Do you think eventually you'll change your business? Yes. Do you think you may change who you are as a person? Yes. You guys, if you were to meet me five years ago, you would have been like, what the? Big baggy clothes, no, no, just no belief in myself. It was the incantations that created me. It was me talking to myself like that every single day to pump myself up, to get myself in a different mindset. And I, I'm gonna leave you with this because it comes back down to these incantations. Your behavior is going to tell the world who you are. Your behavior is gonna tell the world who you are. And your behavior is going to get you the response that you get. And it's either we change our behavior and we start to get into who we really are. We start to step into that true you or we'll continue to get what we have forever. Who's open to changing that? Hell yeah. Can, can we create yeah. Can, can we create can we create some incantations for ourselves? Can, can we can we look at the old you and establish the new you? Can we can we tell ourselves who we want to be every single day? Can you? Yeah. 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 Then let's go do it guys. Make it a great day. Let's go. Well, guys, thank you guys for tuning in. Really appreciate it. I hope this helped. I hope you got a lot of great information from it. Please do me a favor. Don't forget Hit that subscribe button. Give me a little like button on the left-hand side of the page. Share this with everybody you know. I appreciate you guys tuning in. See you on next week's episode.